that then in turn generates our material bodies, which we then identify with this is me, right? So it may either be a woman body or a man body, depending on that consciousness. So, so the idea that, um, oh, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body, or I don't believe in these restrictions of the body, um, that's, that's a lack of understanding. Because the body is a result of your consciousness. It's not that you're, they're not separate things. So because you had a certain consciousness at the end of your life, you developed this body. If you were in a pious state, it will be a beautiful body. A less pious state is what you would kind of get some weird kind of things going on. Um, and if you were thinking more in terms of enjoyment, you would, um, or experience, you could say, you would develop a female body. And if you were uh, thinking more in terms of knowledge or control, you would develop a masculine body. And if you notice, um, men are trying to enjoy women, and women are trying to control men. So it will have a tendency to to go this way, the other way, this way, the other way, because are we are we continue? Well, what are we doing here? You're the we can continue. I think uh, we can continue. Um, okay. So so um, the um, where was I? Yeah. So it will tend to go from one to the other. You you you'll you on your deathbed. You will be thinking of your wife or your husband and. Um, and you will develop a, a body uh, related to that, that consciousness, right? So, so all women think it, in principle in a certain way, and all men in principle think in a certain way. This is, um, it can be very difficult to understand because especially now we're in this Kali Yuga, and everything gets so messed up. So you see men that are acting more like women than many women are. But that's just ignorance taking over. You know, the, the, um, if we want to be happy uh, as, a, as a woman, it's, it's impossible to do it by trying to be a man. If you want to be happy as a man, it's impossible to do it by trying to be a woman. And you see, like, I mean, homosexuals, they have, like, very high risk of, of you know, mental illness, suicide, drug abuse. I mean, so, so you, you can see that it actually, it, it's actually true. Uh, we don't mind homosexuals. It's not like, oh, those guys. We're just, we just um, reserve the right to say that it's not going to work, you know, you're, you're never going to be happy as a homosexual, it's just not going to happen. So, so we want to see the body as a result of our previous consciousness, as well as the tool of getting out. Does that make sense? That this body I have now, this is the problem I have. Right? This is the reason I'm not in the spiritual world. This is the result of the reason why I'm not in the spiritual world. So I have to figure out, how does this work? Not that I'm whimsically saying, no, I want to be a ballerina. I can, it's not like anyone's going to stop me, but it's not going to get me out of the material world, you know. It's going to get me in so many confusing situations. And then, oh, society doesn't understand me. No, I don't understand me. Why would society understand me if I don't understand myself? It's, you know, it just becomes ridiculous. That's a, that's a wrong way of looking at it. This is nothing of value, it's dead matter. But the form it's taken is a result of the problem I have, why I'm in the material world. So if I figure out how it works, then I can reverse the process. Then I can get out, right? So similarly, with a car or a kitchen appliance, or whatever it is you're dealing with, figure out what's the point of it, why is it here, how does it work, then you won't cut off your finger in the blender or whatever it is, you know. So it just you just look at your body in the same way, and then whatever you need to do, that's that's what you need to do. You know, you you want to get married, get married. 
you, you want to not be a brahmachar, be a brahmachar, whatever it is, but just make sure that you arrange your life in such a way that you get the least possible amount of hassle. So, so sometimes, ever so often, I'm, I'm, I'm encountering brahmacharis who, who shouldn't be brahmacharis, and it's like, they, they think that it's a fall down to get married, because they haven't understood the point. The point is, think of Krishna. So if, if you're sitting around in your, in your ashram thinking, I have to remain brahmacharya, I have to remain brahmacharya, what's, what's that got to do with Krishna? It's got nothing to do with Krishna. It's got about everything to do about being brahmacharya. So you're not actually doing it right, you know? But then on the other hand, if you can do it, it just makes everything so much simpler. So, you know, so, so yeah. Um, is that, does that work? Yeah, so, so, um, so, so the body is just a result of, of a contaminated consciousness. So in one way we have to be aware of these differences, and on the other hand we have to actually be a of it, or try to be a of it. Yes, and, and being aware of the differences is how you become a loof. I'll give you the example, let's take the example of the car. If you don't know how to drive a car, let's say you're just, you're just getting your license, and you're driving, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about the gears and the pedals and, and where am I going and am I holding the steering wheel right and what do people think of me, am I going to crash? You think about driving, you know, so... But after you've been driving for 20 years, you had your license, for, what, what are you thinking? You're thinking about where am I going? So that's the idea that if we know how our body works and, and how we should relate ourselves to the body, maybe in the beginning it's a little bit like you have to put some attention on it and, and it seems like all this body consciousness, but as you figure it out, you just think about where am I going, I'm going back to Godhead. You know? So, so that's, the, that's the idea. Um, and while, and then, and then sometimes we hear, now, you know, we're, we're devotees, we can do whatever we want and, and you know, we're not confined by body consciousness. That's, what we would call sahaja tendency. Sahaja literally means the easy path. It just means cutting corners. It just means you just pretend that it's not there. You know, that, oh, it's, you know, you just ignore the problem and it will go away. But it doesn't go away. It just, it just stays. You know? so, so the idea is figure out what it is we're dealing with so we can stop worrying about what it is we're dealing with. Right? Yes. Um, so, we see um, men generally, because they're in these one of these rooms at a time, they are generally um, more um, identifying themselves with uh, activity. And women are generally uh, more identifying themselves with identity. The man defines himself uh, based on what he's doing, the woman defines herself based on what she is. What kind, what is my position in society, who am I associating with, and so on. So, this uh, uh, also brings a lot of wonderful and inspiring uh, situations. Uh, we see that um, actually men are, are usually the best at whatever activity you would have, like the most accomplished and, and uh, successful uh, teacher of runway models, how to walk, and you know this catwalk, there's a specific way they walk, that's a man. He's J. Alexander or something. So, uh, I mean, the, the most accomplished, even in, in, in so-called so feminine, yes? Also cooking, like, yeah, yeah. Also there's some of the world's Best cook attempts to be a man. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're all, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're all, yeah. So, so because they're so much, so much identifying with this activity that they just keep doing it until they're so super good at it, a woman wouldn't waste that much time on it, you know, because <laughs> let's face it, you don't become happy by being world champion of anything. It doesn't, it doesn't actually make you happy. But for the man in illusion, he, he identifies so much with the activity that he'll actually keep doing it until he, you know, becomes world champion. And then it's like, then what? 
hopefully he can, you know, impress a, a lady and get a wife and, you know, get a life. You know, that's, that's, that's the best we can wish for. Thank you. Um, now, for, so, so, the interesting thing is that, that that means men are at the top of society. You know, the, the big bosses, the most wealthy, the world champions, usually men. But, they're also at the bottom. Homeless people, criminals, you know, I mean, crazy people, they're usually also men. So because the activity draws them so much, then if, if it works out, they go further with it. If it's in passion, you know, in passion, you, you actually know what it is you're doing, you just don't really know why. You know, you know how the company works, how finances work, or you know how to use the right technique when you're running or something. But you think that activity will make you happy. That's why it's not goodness, it's passion. It doesn't actually work in the long run. So they will be very successful. But in ignorance, the activity doesn't work either. I mean, one thing is that the goal you're trying to reach is, is off, but the activity you're applying is also off. I want to be happy, so therefore I'm doing drugs. That absolutely does not work. You know? <coughs> So, so men will, will also be at, attached to that activity and they will end up at the bottom of society. You know, all the poorest, craziest the people, people, I mean, men have a lower life expectancy than women. Because when we do good, we, we do good. But when we do bad, we do bad. Worse than women, you know, I mean, way worse. So, so women are kind of in the middle because they're more... Um, <laughs> They're more uh, concerned with their identity. So then um, their activities will be more alike, but their identity will be much more interesting. Like we can see the, the dress on this side of the room and the dresses on this side of the room. There's definitely more going on here. There's kind of colors are matching and everything. You know, we, we, we can appreciate it, but we have no idea what's going on basically. So that's why we get very confused when, when a lady asks, do you like this or this better, you know, it's like, what's the right answer, you know, um, when, when, when it's on, we can see that it's working, and we, oh, okay, that's pretty cool, uh, but when we're getting the option, it's like, I don't, ah, you know, so, so women have that ability, um, and it's, you know, one thing is stress, another thing is, um, you know, how to decorate your house, or you have your children, or I mean, all these things. There's a whole, there's a whole idea behind it. You know, the man he he walking along with the child. Sometimes he's not even sure if he's holding the child upside down or not. It's like it, there's no plan. It's like he's kind of making it up as he goes along. So that also just. As a side point, I want to bring in is why feminism is not working because women have an incredible creativity and an ability to see details and make them work together. So what feminism is saying that you should maintain that and all your traditional values and you should also take over the men's. So that creates an impossible situation. You can't do that unless you have a hundred hours in a day. You don't. You, just, you have 24. So you, you can choose to be a successful businessman or you can choose to have a happy home with kids and stuff like that. You cannot do both. It's just not physically possible. But feminism will tell you that it is. So feminism actually, we have to here uh, look at womanhood and womanness. So the, there's a difference. Womanness is the um, expression of being a woman, right? The woman, like, like the, mm, yeah, it's the expression of being a woman. Womanhood is the experience of being a woman. What it actually feels like. So feminism, feminism is uh, is um, propagating womanness. The the. It, it looks good if you're in a, in a debate on the, on the television or something. Yes, we should have these rights and it should be like this and like that. So, from an external point of view, if you're looking at it, it looks really good that you had all this and that and the other thing. But the experience of trying to attain all that is horrible. 
a, it, it's an incredible pressure to put on, on, on a person that you have to have the perfect job, you have to have the perfect house, you have to have the perfect kids, the perfect uh, you know, looks and dress and political attitude and you know nobody can do that. So, so, so that, and, and it's, it's, it's not, um, it's completely natural, feminism, uh, because it's propagated by two people. There's a, there's a male feminist and a female feminist. Now, the female feminist is because she hasn't actually, she's been just let down by men. Women want protection. And if a man doesn't protect her, she will protect herself. That's just, you know, what else are you going to do? Just, I mean, so, so if a woman has been disappointed by men who have not been protecting her, like the father that ran out on her, or even worse, or, you know, a, a, a painful divorce or something, she will protect herself. So if, she, if he can't do it, I'll do it myself. So then that gives rise to, to feminist thoughts, that no, women can do it themselves. And the man who's a feminist is basically the man who's not sensitive and sense controlled. It works out great for him because he can exploit the woman by saying, no, they, they can take care of themselves, I don't have to take care of them, I don't have any responsibility, they can take care of themselves. So men who haven't been doing their duty have a tendency to, to support these feminist views, right? It sounds great, feminism, but it doesn't work. So, so it's actually very unfair towards women. And also men, because they're taking all, they're taking all the crap, you know. Um, so so it's, it's just, um, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It's a natural problem in a society that works on sense gratification, because sense gratification means exploitation. It means you're exploiting nature, the world. So, women are part of the world. So, that will give rise to, you know, exploitation of women, that will give rise to feminism. Uh, but in, in practicality, it doesn't work. Um, we have to work together. And that's also, you know, why you give a seminar like this, is to try and figure out how can we work together so we can all go back to Godhead and Hari Paul. The man has this Thing. He, he finds one thing and he likes to do that or, or his favorite pair of pants and he's always wearing the favorite pair of pants and he's got maybe five pairs of pants but he's always wearing that one pair and it doesn't matter if it has holes or it's hanging by his knees or anything, it's his favorite pair of pants so he's wearing that. The woman likes variety. She can open the closet and she has like 250 saris and she'll go, I have nothing to wear. <laughs> so, so that's also why men give stability and women give variety. They give, like we were saying, men have the control and women have the power. Men have the stability, women have the value. That, that's what they bring to the party. That's how we cooperate, right? So, um, so uh, and that's also why you see that, um, you know, Men are generally good at making money, because you find something that works, you just keep doing that. That's how you make money. So you just, one activity, you just keep doing the same activity over and over again, and that, make, that generates money. So, so women, they are good at variety, so they're good at spending money, because there's always a new option for, you know. So it works out, you know, because the man, he can have all this money, you see, you see these like kind of neurotic businessmen who, who don't figure out that it has to be applied into a relationship, who are on their third marriage because he thinks, I just supply the house and then my job is done. And then the woman is sitting alone in the house the whole day and there's no relationship, so she leaves and he doesn't get it. So he does that two, three times and he's miserable like anything. He's stinking rich, but he's miserable. So it actually works out. The, the, I mean, it's not like the woman is exploiting the man by spending his money. She's adding value to his life because it, it generates something. You know, there's, there's a reason why he's making the money. So, so it's actually not like, oh, that's so stereotypical or something. No, it works out. It actually does. Uh, and, and a woman would want a man who 
actually can make more money than she can or is more intelligent or you know stronger or because otherwise if she's more qualified than him on all these points what does she need him for why why would she hang out with him i saw recently a survey uh, where they had uh, asked women in relationships if they were looking for something better and before that or after anyway they asked I mean, they, they looked at some statistics about the, the man and the woman relationship and those where the woman was making more money or was, had a better education or you know, higher social status, it was 80, 80 something percent said, yes, I'm looking for something better. Because why, what's the point of the man if she can do everything he can do better? I mean, she's already making the babies and taking care of them, that's not an easy task. That's, that takes, you know, that takes a lot of work and sleepless nights and all of that, you know. So what does the man bring to the table? He has to bring something more, you know. So that's why the activity um, is so important for the man. Does that make sense? That actually, that actually that's how he supports her. That's how he becomes that stability that you know, comforts the woman, because otherwise it just gets a little too crazy. Um, and it's also why it, we have some problems in, in this part of the world, is because um, men are not actually being qualified. Because we, we live in a society that's based on sense gratification. We're constantly being bombarded with uh, ideas that, you know, um, you get this deodorant and all the women will think you're really great. And, or, you know, what did you, you get this deodorant, like perfume, and all the women will think you're really great. You walk down the street and you have like hordes of women just following you because you have this deodorant, right? Uh, this is kind of how the commercials work. Now, um, intellectually, we might be able to figure out that's probably not what's going to happen. But still, the idea that this is the good life will, will sink in, right? So men will be looking for, you know, enjoyment in women and, and, and basically just looking for a new mom, you know. I mean, because we're not being trained that you have to do your duty. Like we were saying in the class the other day, that there is a, a focus on freedom and, and, and uh, lack of responsibility. You know, this is a free country, rather than on obligation and duty. And these things are, are, are not, you can't separate them. Freedom means duty. If you do your duty, you have freedom. So we, we are not training men in that way of thinking. And that's why we have 50% divorce rate. Because men are not doing their duty. So that's the problem. That's also, you know, feminism comes from that. So, so that's, uh, that's what we, 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 we want to change. So um, can can we uh, can we stop now? Sure. <laughs> because we, yeah, we have another day tomorrow, and I have That's an early morning. Yeah, to schedule it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's enough also for tomorrow. No, no, there will be, but it's just yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. We don't want to drive. No, no. no but, yeah, so I, th I think this is. I think this is a good time to stop because this was kind of the the psychology aspect. And now we're kind of moving into a more society kind of thing. And, and I think tomorrow we'll be talking a little more about practicalities and how to arrange the, the relationships and what are the kind of practical things that we, we have to face and how does that relate to society. So stuff like that, Vedic society, modern society. So I think it's a good time. Uh, are there any questions like just now at the end or are we we're pretty good? I think we're pretty good.